Hello and welcome to a new lab for our STM32C0 MOOC. In this lab, we will learn how to create a Artos, so real-time operating system application, on a STM32C0 using ST development tools and Microsoft Azure Artos FredEx, which is included in our STM32 Cube environment. The purpose of this lab is to create a simple project using STM32 Cube IDE and Azure Artos FredEx. We will be using the STM32C031 nuclear board and we're going to create an application that will read the user button state and work with that to turn on the LED and send the messages on the UART. So we will have different threads running using the Artos uh, FredEx. We will follow the steps below. First, create a new project. Second, select a part number, STM32C0 part number. Then do the STM32 CubeMX settings configuration part. Then do the pinout, the pin configurations. And then finally, we will add some code, you know, to add our application code. First, let me give you a little bit of introduction to our STM32 Cube software suite ecosystem or environment. Starting from the left, we have the software tools, including the STM32 CubeMX, the STM32 CubeID, so that's what we have been using in this MOOC so far, and we're also going to use this, so this is our ID uh, for this lab. But we also have the STM32 Cube Programmer and the STM32 Cube Monitor. In the center, we have the embedded software where we offer our STM32 Cube MCU packages, including the drivers, so the HAL and the low level drivers that we have seen you know, in previously in this MOOC. Then we have the middleware, and finally, some application code examples that we provide. For the STM32C0, the middleware integrates all Microsoft Azure Artos suite for free. This includes Azure Artos FredEx, so for real-time operating system, Azure Artos FileX, so this is for file system, and for some part numbers of STM32 that includes Ethernet and USB peripherals, we also include Azure Artos NetX and Azure Artos USBX. Now we can start the lab. So you know these steps very well by now. So first, we're going to create a new project under stm 2 Cube ID. We're going to select the stm 2 C0 31C6 T6. So this is the one that is used on our nuclear board. So the Nucleo C0 31. Okay, let's create a new project. So make sure all your previous projects are closed. And now we can create a new project for this lab. So you know the steps. Now, in the STM32 project for the MCU selector, we select as before the STM32 C031 C6 T6. So that's the one that is included here in the nuclear board. So we'll select that and click next. Now give a name to your project. So for example, I'm calling it STM32C0 underscore Artos. And then click finish. The tool might ask you to change perspective, you know, to open the device configuration tool. So if this is the case, then press yes. This will bring us to the STM32 CubeMX settings. So this is where graphically you can configure your project. First, in the system core, we will select the sys, so for system, so SYS, and you're going to select a different time source than the systic. So because we're using uh, Artos applications, so we will use a timer for the HAL, so for the cube library. So select, for example, the timer 16, Okay, so this is the STM32 CubeMX part of the project. In the Pinout Configuration tab, under System Core, look for Sys, so for System. And then, for the time base source, we'll select, instead of Sysstick, we'll select a timer, so timer 16. Secondly, 
So under connectivity, we will enable the user too. So this is, you know, to get some user messages that will be part of our, our application. So same thing, you know, we we'll use user two, which is connected to the virtual com port of the ST-Link on our nuclear board. So now under connectivity, so look for connectivity here, look for user two, and we will enable it in asynchronous mode. Last but not least, we will go into the middleware section and then open middleware, select FredEx, and then enable core. So next to core, there is a checkbox, enable it. So this will enable the Azure Atos FredEx feature in your project. Scroll down all the way here, middleware. So expand it, select FredEx, and click here on core. So this will import all the files necessary for your Artos application using FredEx. Now we can take care of the pin configuration. So for example, we want to use the user button. So we configure PC13 that is connected to the user button as a GPIO EXTI13, so external interrupt mode. So like we did in a previous uh, lab. So in the pinout view right there, we're going to expand a little bit. Look for PC13. So it's located here. And we're going to configure it as GPIO EXTI13. So external interrupt line 13. Now we will configure the IO that is connected to the LED as output push pull. So to drive the LED high or low. So the IO uh, on the board is PF5, so connected to the circuit, you know, to turn on the LED or turn it off. So we'll configure it as GPIO output PF5. We will add some labels to the two IOs we configured. So PC13 will label it to user button and PF5 will give a, a user label as LED. To enter a user label, you're going to right click on the pin. So here, enter user label. So for PC13, we will enter user button. So to be compatible, you make sure that you put uh, uppercase U user underscore button with upper, uh, uppercase B for button and then enter. And then now we're going to add another user label for PA5, which is connected to the LED and we'll name it LED uppercase. Now we can configure the NVIC, so the interrupt controller. So to do this, you can go to NVIC from the system core or also, you know, from the system view. The following window will pop up and display a warning. So displaying the following. So if interrupts handler call Artos functions, please make sure their preemption priorities are lower, so numerically higher, than the highest syscall interrupt priority. So this is something to keep in mind. So in our case, we don't have any functions or Artos functions called in the interrupt handler. So we won't have the problem, but you know, that's something to remember. So press OK. OK, so the NVIC, you can find it here. So in the system core NVIC or also in the system view. So we'll open it here. So this is the pop-up, you know, message that I was telling you about and press OK. In the NVIC, enable the EXTI line 4 to 15. So this is the interrupt for the EXTI line 13, which is, remember, the user button. So PC13 connected as uh, external interrupt that we will use for the user button. OK, so in the NVIC, let's expand it a little bit to see what's going on. So we want to enable the EXTI line 4 to 15 interrupt. So this is for the user button. Now we can generate the code. So remember the little icon like this with a gear, or you can also press Alt-K or just save your project. So that will ask you to generate the code and then press yes. Okay, we'll generate the code. So using this little icon there and change perspective, yes, we will enter the C and C++ perspective where we're going to add some code. 
Now it's time to code. So this is the first view of your project. So as you can see, so this is your project right here, Project Explorer. So you see all the different folders of your projects and in core source, you will see that you already have some new files with you know the Azure Atos support right there. And then we'll see that in the middleware, you also have some additional files and directories. You can also notice that in your main.c, uh, you already have an include for app underscore fredx.h. So this is your project right here. So the user files are going to be here. So we're going to be modifying or adding code in main.c and also app underscore fredx.c. Now I wanted also to show you in the middleware. So where are the fredx files? So all of them are right here. So this is included in your project. First, we're going to add some code to redirect the printf to the UART2, so user2. So we did that in a previous lab. So if you want to do uh, to know a little bit more about the process, you can review the MOOC lab uh, about the printf. So we give more details about how to redirect you know, the printf to a user or UART. So user2 in uh, this case. And we're going to add the code in the user code zero section. So remember to add the code within you know, this user code uh, begin and end so that it doesn't you know, get deleted when you regenerate the code from the STM5 to Kubemx uh, part of the project. So we're going to add this code in the main.c in the user code begin zero section. Same as before, so for the code to be added, you can find it in the description of the video right here, and you can just copy and paste, or otherwise, if you want to type it, you can do that also. So this is the code uh, here that we're going to be adding. And uh, in my case, I will just copy and paste you know, from the description of the video. So in main.c, scroll down and look for the user code zero. So this is the section we're going to add uh, the code to redirect the printf to the UART number two that we configured previously. So this is done. Now we can open app underscore fredx.c to add the following code. So first, we're going to add some includes. So include stdio.h and also include main.h. Okay, I'm going to save main.c. Now I'm going to open app underscore fredx.c, which is located into core and source, so like a main.c. So double click on it. And first, we're going to add the includes. So right here in this section, right there, includes. Please add the stdio.h and also main.h. Now we can add the size, so the stack size for the three different you know, threads we're going to use and also for the different queues we're going to use in this example. So in the private define, in the user code PD section, please add the different stack size and also the queue size we'll be using in this lab. So let's keep on coding and adding some code. So in this code section here, we're going to add some code to create the threads create the queues, create the variables and functions prototypes for the code. So two parts. First, in the private variables, in the user code PV section, please add the following. So this will define the stack, the queues, so the size of the queues that we defined you know, previously right there, and also for the stack size defined right there. And then we define some pointers you know, for the threads and also for the queues. Step two of this task is to go to the function prototypes and add another you know, the three different function prototypes for the three different threads. Now let's create the threads and queues needed to use the button status to control the LED and the messages sent via UART, so using printf. So scroll down now, and we're looking for this section here. So which is app underscore fredx underscore init. 
So in the function app underscore fredx underscore init right there. So in this section, let's add this code. So to create the queues and create the threads, so we're going to create two different queues to send messages. So for the button status and the LED status and three different threads, one for the button status, the other one for the LED action and the third one for LED status. Almost there. So now what we're going to do is add some code to create the thread functions to work with the button, LED, and the UART, so for the printf. So we're going to add that in the user code uh, one section, and we're going to add, you know, basically the three different threads that we're going to create right here. So this is the code. For example, we're going to start with adding, you know, the code for the button status, and then we'll move on to the two other tasks or threads. So in the user code one section, so this is at the end of the file, so still in app underscore fredx.c. In this section, we're going to add the three different functions for the three different threads. So let's start by the button status. So this is the first function to be added here at this location. Now we're going to add the second function, so LED action. So still in the user code one section. So right after this first function, we're going to add the second one right here. So this is LED action, right? Now we are just missing one to be added. And last part, finally, we made it. Let's add the last function right there is LED status. We can now have a look at the code that we added, especially the different threads here, so different tasks. So here, let's start with the button status. So what do we do? In a while loop, so infinite loop, we put a delay, and then we're going to uh, read, basically, uh, the user button. Depending on the status of the user button that we're going to read, we're going to set or, you know, reset a variable right there. So this one. And we'll send it, send, you know, using a queue, so a message queue. So txq sent will send the message to another task. So this is the second task here, where we're going to receive the message that was sent by the first task. Depending on the message, we're going to uh, turn on the LED or turn it off. So turn it on or turn it off. And then at the end, we send another message using Q1 this time, where we send a new message to uh, another task. And so this is the last task. And depending on the message, we are going basically to uh, display the LEDs on or the LEDs off. All right, so now it's time in order to uh, test our code. So we're going to build it and we're going to run the code. It's time for our debug session now, yeah, to test the code. First, we're going to build the code. So remember the little icon like that, the hammer, that's, you know, to build the code or you can do project build tool. Make sure we have no errors and no warnings. Okay, let's build the code. So pressing the icon here and we'll wait for the end. So it might take more time on your machine so you can pause the video if needed. So far, so good. So zero errors, zero warnings. So that's great. Good starts. Let's continue. Now we can enter debug. So make sure your board is connected, of course. And you can do run debug as STM32 uh, C++ uh, C++ application or directly you know, click on this little icon like uh, the green bug. Okay, so we can now click on this little icon. You can you see it here, right there. So this is to enter, you know, the debug session. We're going to press OK. And now we're going to load the code and also change perspective. So that's coming here. We switch and now we are ready to execute our code. So to execute the code, remember, so we just press here, resume. 
Okay, so at this point, we talk about that in a previous lab, so I'm going to go fast on this. And you might already have a console that has been created that you can select. Otherwise, I will show you again here how to create a new, you know, like terminal, a serial port, you know, terminal within stm 2 cube ID. So those are the steps. First, you're going to find the command, command shell console from here, from this menu. Then you're going to create a serial port, new, or select a previous one if you had one. But in this case, we'll create a new one. Okay. Select the parameters. So first, you will give the connection name. Like here, we're going to give a name like terminal one. Select the proper serial port that is associated to the stlink virtual com port. So in this case, uh, this is com18. You know, in this uh, this example. And for the parameters, we're going to use 115, 200 for the baud rate, data size 8, parity none, and one stop bit. Then click finish. To complete the creation of the terminal, we're going to select the encoding. So for example, here I'm selecting UTF-8, but previously I, uh, I selected ISO, which also works. So there's no issue there. And then just press OK. OK. So let's create this terminal. So let's find the icon that we're talking about. It's located here in the bottom right, right here. Expand it. Go to command shell console. So this is where we can create you know, our connection type. So first select serial port. So in this case, I had a previous one that was created, but I will show you how to create a new one. So click on new. Then give a name to your project. So we said terminal one, you know, let's go one. And then select uh, the proper COM port. So if you're not sure which one, go to your device manager and make sure, you know, you select the proper one. So in my case, it's COM 108. And then we keep the rest by default. Then click finish. Select, we said we tried a new one. So UTF-8, that also works. ISO also works and then press OK. Now I can test my code. So let's press this user button, which is the blue one on your board. Press it, press, 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 press. So as long as you press, it's going to turn the LED on, you release, turn it off. Turn it on, release, turn it off. And you have, of course, the LED also that changes. So the green LED connected to PA5 that changes. OK. So it works perfectly fine. So we have a good example about uh, Arthos you know, applications. So of course, you know, like it doesn't enter the details about how to use FredX. So there is more. So we have some uh, other collection of videos on our uh, STM32 uh, you know, like channel where we talk about more in details about how to use you know, the FredEx. But here, I wanted to just give you an idea how you, know, you can create easily like an uh, Arthos application on your STM42C0 with our tool. So you can now stop the execution. So click on this icon right there, see the red square, and close your project. So right click, close project. And we're done. Thank you very much for watching.